he would draw all men unto himself. So, Father, I pray that Yeshua Jesus be lifted up today, that he could draw people closer to him. In the name of Yeshua, because your word says no one can even come to him except you, Father, do the drawing. So, God, draw today by your power. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We welcome you today. Well, I don't see anyone out there, but sometimes Facebook doesn't show it for a while. But just in case, if anyone is out there this morning, thank you for joining us. And I pray that the Word of God would be a blessing unto us. Happy, celebrated Easter, which is Pesach which is passed over. So we thank you again for joining us today. I put out there on Facebook and also in the video, video, a good day is any day, every day, to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection, resurrection of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. But first of all, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, my Bible teaches us how we are to be justified by our faith according to Romans chapter 4 and Romans chapter 5. We're justified if we believe on God. And we believe that God raised His Son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead. We're justified as our father, Abraham, was justified according to his faith, meaning trust. Then the Bible also says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him, that's his son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, Man believeth, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, that's the name of the Lord, shall be saved. 1 John, uh, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsake his sin shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper according to the word of God. All of this is according to the scripture that we will share today and every day I teach. I want to teach according to what is written down in the word of God. Your evidence, your proof is always in the holy word of God. Who killed Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, and who plan were they following? I'm going to go ahead and answer this now because, uh, well, I think I have it right down. I'll expound on that in a little while. Have your way, Holy Ghost, to Rosh Hakosh. Read Yeshua, Yeshua Jesus. I call this out to help us to rightly divide the word of truth just in case we cannot. Dog Blue, I will call it out, God the Father, when I'm speaking of them. Light Blue, Holy Ghost, Rush, Harkosh. Jesus Yeshua is not dead, red. Jesus Yeshua is not dead, red. 
and God, blue. Yahshua's father, blue, never die. Come and see. Happy so-called Easter, which is Pesach, Passover, happy celebrated Resurrection Day called Easter. Well, why did I say uh, Easter? Because, again, we find that one time in King James Version. In King Complete Jewish Bible, it says Pesach, P-E-S-A-C-H, A-M-P, Passover. But Easter has nothing to do with the death, resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, we've been teaching that for many years on Easter, as we say, we get all dressed up. Uh, we get our kids dressed up with Easter basket with a bunny rabbit and chicken eggs. Someone once said, boy, the devil really tried to confuse us by putting chicken egg with a rabbit. And a rabbit does not lay chicken eggs. So although we are celebrating Yeshua Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we do not have to wait until the time called Easter. Now, many people will probably be in church today that has not been there since last so-called Easter and might not ever come again until the next so-called Easter. Now, many times people feel like, well, because this is the death, burial, and resurrection, Easter, everybody going to church, so I'm going to show up in church. People of God, since people show up on what you call Easter, let's make sure we're giving them the truth. And we're not lying and deceiving them. We're not telling them God died. God the Father wrapped himself in fl uh, flesh, incarnated himself, because that is not the word of God. If you can find that, show it to me. Only if it's in a bad translation. So if people come into our churches for the first time, especially, let's make sure we are giving them the truth according to the word of God. So again, happy Easter, peace out, which is Passover. Happy celebrated day called Easter. However, Easter is found one time in the King James Version, Complete Jewish Bible, Pesach, and AMP, Passover. But Easter, Pesach, P-E-S-A-C-H, and Passover has nothing to do with Yeshua, Jesus' death, and him being raised from the dead. It has to do with Peter being kept in jail until after Easter. You know, because this is what we teach. This is what we believe because we have been taught that for so many years that Easter has to do with when Jesus died. We even came up with Good Friday. Every day is good. Every Friday is good because God give us those days. So we call it Good Friday, which is not even biblical. And we use again Easter to say this is when Yeshua died and when he rose again three days later. But it's not according to God's word. Now, any day, every day, we can celebrate the death and burial and the resurrection of Yeshua Jesus. That's why I'm teaching about it all through the year. I'm not waiting until a day called Easter. Because Paul said, I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. How Christ the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. 
Now, I hope someone is teaching that today. Not teaching unscriptural things that's not according to God's word. We should be reminded and thankful throughout the year just how much God the Father loves all humanity that he sent and raised his first begotten son, which is Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead. And no one took his life. He gave it freely. Now, sometimes people do not realize no one had the power to take Yeshua, Jesus' life. He gave it freely because he could have called any time for 12 legion of angels and his father would have sent them. But he had a mission. He had a promise that if he gave his life, God would raise him three days later and make him the head of the church. And so you'll find that again about Easter, peace out, Passover. It's in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And I'm not sure if I will get to that verse today, but we can read it for ourselves. Again, John 10, 18. I'm reading from Complete Jewish Bible. This is Yeshua Jesus. No one take it away from me, that's the Son of God. On the contrary, I lay it down of my own free will. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. Red, that's the Son of God. This is what my red, the Son of God, Father Blue, dark blue, commanded me to do. How many of us read that and teach this, that this is what God commanded his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, to do? God did not command himself to lay down his life. He commanded his son to lay down his life, and no one had the power to take his life, but he gave it freely. I always relate myself and everyone else to that. No one has the power to take our spiritual life. We can lay our spiritual life down and we can pick up our old life again. The same power that God gave his son, the freedom to die, he gives us that same power freedom to die to ourselves. As Paul says, I die daily. Paul did not mean he sinned daily. What he meant was he died to sin daily. As the Bible teaches us, in that Yeshua Jesus died, the Son of God, but in that he lives, he lives for God. Yeshua Jesus is not God the Father. Yeshua Jesus lives for his Father God. I believe, trust, and therefore I speak. Say it again. I believe the word of God. And therefore I speak the word of God. If we believe the word of God is true, why are we changing the word of God and teaching our own doctrine? No, stay with what God said. I always say he know exactly what he's speaking of. I believe, trust, and therefore I speak. The Son, Yeshua, Jesus of God teaches one why his Father loves him. Why his, that's Yeshua Jesus, Father love, that's dark blue, him. God love Yeshua. God loves the world. Receive it or reject it. Your choice. How many of us know God's word is true? But we have a choice, people, to receive it or reject it. 
I choose to receive the word of God. That's why Yeshua Jesus says, Father, they have received your word. He didn't say, Father, dark blue, meaning God. They have received my word, red, Yeshua Jesus. No. He says, Father, they have received your word. Many times we are receiving other people's words, but not according to God's word. All of this is according to scripture, your evidence, your proof, is always in the word of God. I will not teach, nor proclaim, nor confess false doctrine, teaching, but only what the scripture says, which is true. In Acts 4, 25, 26, I said I will call out these colors. If I'm speaking of God the Father, I use dark blue. If I'm speaking of Yeshua, uh, the Son of God, I use red. If I'm speaking of the Rosh Harkosh, Holy Ghost, I use a very light blue. In Acts 25 through 26, but the Rosh Harkosh, that's light blue, which is the Holy Ghost. Through the mouth of our Father, your servant, your dark blue God's servant. You said, God said, the kings of the earth took their stand, and the ruler assembled together against Adonai, that's God the Father, and against who? His son. And against his Messiah, which is Christ read. First Corinthians 15, I quoted this earlier, and this is what should be delivered today and should be expound on today. In First Corinthians 15, I kind of broke it up a little bit, and I'll go back if the Lord's will and read more of it. Who died? Read. The Messiah, Christ died. Read. Not his father, God, dark blue. Who was buried? Red, the Messiah Christ. Not his, red, Yeshua, father, God. Who rose again on the third day? The Messiah Christ, red. Not his father, God, dark blue. Who sent? God sent, dark blue. Yeshua Jesus, red, God the Father. Who raised Yeshua Jesus? God the Father. You killed the author of life, red. Who is the author of life? Yeshua Jesus, the Son of God. That's who they killed. You would never find in Scripture they killed God. No, they did not. Because God wasn't even in the earth. Yeshua Jesus was in the earth. You kill the author of life. Red. But God has raised. Dark blue. Him. Him who? The author of life. But God has raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. What are we witnessing to today? Are we witnessing to they killed the Son of God, the author of life? But although they killed the Son of God, the author of life, but God, his Father, raised him three days later from the dead, and we saw him. And we are witnesses. We saw him crucified. We saw him being raised from the dead. And we know truly that was the son of the living God. That's why you study scripture where they said, truly, this was the son of God. Truly, because 
that is exactly who he is. Let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel that it is in the name of the Messiah Yeshua from Nazareth, whom read the Son of God, you have executed on a state as a criminal, but whom read God has raised dark blue, because the dead cannot raise the dead. God can do anything, but God just did not raise Himself because God did never did not ever die. God has raised from the dead who Yeshua the Messiah, His Son, that this man stand before you perfectly healed. That's Acts four, verse ten. Complete Jewish Bible. Act 1330. But God raised, dark blue, him from the dead, Yeshua the Messiah, his son. All of this is according to the scriptures. Your evidence, your proof. We have the same spirit of faith. Wow. I wish we all had the same spirit of faith. We all believe the same thing. We all would speak the same thing. We all would preach the same thing. We all would teach the same thing. But today, I guarantee you, somebody is teaching something completely different than what the scripture teaches us. We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised dark blue God up the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, red, shall raise us up also. The same God that raised up Yeshua Jesus will also raise us up also. How? By Jesus, which is Yeshua. And shall present us with you. Because Yeshua is going to present us before God. First Corinthians, as we went through that last week, how Yeshua said, I will write my Father's, I would write uh, down my father's name on their forehead, uh, the city of my God upon their forehead, uh, which is New Jerusalem. And I would write uh, uh, my new name upon their forehead. That's in Revelation. We went through that, I think, uh, Monday night. First Corinthians 15, 14. If the Messiah Christ, red, son of God, not God the Father, has not been raised, the Messiah Christ, then what we have proclaimed is in vain. Also, your trust is in vain. Other words, if someone does not believe it was the Messiah Christ, the Son of God, that was raised from the dead, their faith, their trust is in vain. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 14. Just in case we have not studied the chapter, I paraphrase uh, some verses out of there earlier. Uh, Romans 7 and 14, Romans 7 and 4 AMP. Therefore, my fellow believers, you too die to the law through the crucifixion body of Christ, the crucified body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who was raised, Yeshua the Messiah, read from the dead, in order that we may bear fruits for who? Yeshua? No. In order that we might bear fruits for God. That's why in that Yeshua died, he died once and for all, but in that he liveth, he continued to live, he lived for his father, God. Romans 10 and 9, complete Jewish Bible. 
Romans 10 and 9. That if you acknowledge this publicly, that means confess, with your mouth, what are we to acknowledge? That Yahshua is Lord, that's Jesus, read, and trust in your heart that God raised, dark blue, him from the dead, not himself. God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, from the dead. You will be delivered, saved. Well, notice that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in your heart that God raised Yeshua from the dead, you will be delivered, meaning saved. You are delivered, saved from unbelief. That's why it says if. But what happens if we do not? Galatians 1 1 complete Jewish Bible. From Saul, any missionary apostle, I received my commission not from human being or through hum human mediation, but through Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised, dark blue, him from the dead, Yeshua from the dead. Also from all the brothers with me. Colossians 2, 12. Complete Jewish Bible. You were buried along with him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Son of God, by being immersed, baptized, in union with him, with Yeshua, Jesus. You were also raised up along with him, Yeshua, Jesus, read, by God's faithfulness, dark blue, God the Father. That work is when he raised, God raised, Yeshua from the dead. Read, when God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, from the dead. Hebrew 11 and verse 19. For he has concluded <coughs> that God could even raise, dark blue, people from the dead. Well, this is uh, Abraham when he uh, uh, he he was uh, of age. He could not have kids. But this is what it has to do with that take you back to the days of Abraham. Peter 1, 21, complete Jewish Bible. Through him you trust, through Yeshua Jesus, in God. It, through Yeshua Jesus we trust in God who raised dark blue, God raised him, red, his son, him from the dead, and gave him glory. God raised Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead, and God glorified his son. So that your trust and hope are in God. A.M.P. same verse. And through him, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus, you believe confidentially, confidentially in God, the Heavenly Father, who raised, dark blue, him from the dead and gave him glory, red, Yeshua the Messiah, so that your faith and hope are centered and rest in God. That's God the Father, dark blue. All of this is according to the scriptures, your evidence, proof. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, shall raise up us also by Jesus, Yeshua, and shall present us with you. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 14. If the Messiah Christ, read, not God the Father, has not been raised, if Yeshua Jesus has not been raised, we need to focus on this. If it wasn't Yeshua Jesus that was not raised, then what we have proclaimed is in vain. Not only in vain, it would be a lie. And your trust is in vain. Because what they proclaimed was, it was the Messiah Christ that died. It was God the Father that raised up Christ from the dead. That's why so we believe, so we spoke. So when we believe something, we are to speak it. Many people do not believe certain things, therefore they do not speak it. 
And then sometimes we speak things that we really don't believe. And then when uh, uh, we speak things and we believe those things so according to the word of God, then when someone confronts them, then they are what? Embarrassed. They should not be. Everyone should be happy when someone tells them the truth. They should be happy. So they do not do not have to continue in error. We may all fall in error somewhere at some time. But praise God for the truth. So if anyone tell me, uh, Sister Neil, uh, God did die and God uh, incarnated himself, wrapped him in flesh, came to earth, uh, died, and God raised himself back. And what I'm going to say is, show it to me. Because I have studied that over and over again, and I have never, ever found that anywhere in the Bible. Only some bad translation used that word incarnated, which is not even a biblical word. 1 Corinthians 15. Now I'm going to... I paraphrased this before. Now I'm going to read the entire uh, verses. Now, brothers, uh, letting us know it's not speaking to ungodly people because ungodly people has not been justified by their faith. So they are without God. So brothers, brethren, brothers and sisters are those of us who are in Christ Jesus, in Yeshua the Messiah. So this is why Paul addressed them as brothers because he had a revelation before he did not believe we know that when we study scripture he was standing there when stephen was stoned to death because he did not have knowledge but once he was knocked down to the ground and he prayed and ananias went and laid his hand on his eyes and he the scales fell off of his eyes and he was able to see so once he was able to see the truth, he changed his teaching. He went straight into the synagogue teaching, Yes, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ is the Son of God. So he teaches us once he received that, he delivered that. Well, many people can't deliver the truth because they will not receive the truth. So look at 1 Corinthians. Those who follow me, you know I use it quite often often because it's so powerful. And then I say, oh, God's word is powerful. Now, brothers, I must remind you of the good news gospel. This gospel has to do with Yeshua Jesus, which I proclaim in the past to you, and which you receive in the past, and on which you have taken your stand at that time. So they received it, and they was what? Standing on it. That's why he said, and on which you have taken your stand. In other words, you have taken your stand on what I delivered unto you. But he doesn't just leave us there. So we said, well, what did he tell them? What did he teach them? He tell us in verse 2. And by which you are being saved, provided. You keep holding fast, holding on to the message I proclaimed in the past to you. For if you don't hold on to what I delivered unto you, your trust will have been in vain. Well, that tell us we can deliver something to people. People can receive it. But that doesn't mean they continue to stand on what you delivered to them. And that's why Paul said you are being saved provided you hold on. Well, that let us know if they did not hold on to what he delivered unto them, they are in the process of being lost because they didn't hold on to it. So in verse number three, for among the first things I pass on to you was what I also received. See, he received that it was Christ that died. Namely this, the Messiah Christ died, read, Son of God, for our sins in accordance with what the scripture said. Other words, he, he teaching what is written down in the word of God. He did not say according to what the other disciples said. No, he said according to 
the scripture, what is written down, because this is my proof. Uh, verse 4. And he was buried, bread, Yeshua Jesus, and he was raised, Yeshua Jesus, on the third day, in according with what the scripture said. And this is so important that people need to go back and start teaching what the scripture says. What you can take a person to and show them that this is not your teaching. This is not your doctrine. This is what's written down in the word of God. That it was Yeshua, the son of God, Jesus the Christ that died. It was God the Father of Yahshua Jesus that raised his son three days later from the dead. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. God has shown us such mercy that we do not lose courage as we do the work he has given us. God blew. God has shown God blew. He has given us uh, dark blue, God. Indeed, now watch this, and this is where I am. Indeed, we refuse to make use of shameful, underhanded methods, employing deception or distorting God's message. On the contrary, by making very clear what the truth is. We commend ourselves to everyone conscious in the sight of God. In other words, they they wasn't going to be teaching deception and, 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 and stuff that wasn't according to God's word. So if indeed our good news is veiled, that means hidden, so if indeed our good news is veiled, remember Moses had a veil on his face where they couldn't see the glory. So it says, so if indeed our good news is veiled, like hidden, it is veiled only to those in the process of being lost. Well, he, he's not speaking about ungodly people. He's saying if a person like the good news, the gospel, Yeshua the Messiah, if it hid from some people, they are in the process of being lost because the God of this world has blinded their eyes so they cannot see the truth. But we know it's not always safe to blind our eyes. Sometimes we close our own eyes in verse 4. And then tell us why. They do not come to trust because the God of this world has blinded their mind in order to prevent them from seeing the light shining from the good news that Yeshua Jesus about the glory of the Messiah, Christ, who is the image of God. Not God, he's in the image of God. Image mean a copy and copy. Image mean a look alike. Image is not the same. Like if you're in the sun, I haven't seen that for many years, and you can look on the ground and you can see your image. You can see your whole body. Uh, that's an image of you. You look in the mirror. You're seeing like you're seeing yourself, but it's like an image. If you look at the twin, they are the image of each other, but they are not the same. So you need to, if you, just in case you has, have not, look at the word image. He is in the image of God because no one ever seen God. So people saw Yeshua and they were able to see the Father through Yeshua. As we can see Yeshua through the Spirit, we're to be able to see God in the Spirit. As Stephen was filled with the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost, he looked up into heaven and he proclaimed what he saw. He said, I see the glory of God and Yeshua the Messiah standing on the right hand 
of God. See, he was able to see that in the spirit. We are to be able to see that in the spirit. For it is the God who once said, God the Father, God the Blue, let light shine. Yeshua the Messiah is the light out of darkness. See, Yeshua always outshine the devil if we allow him to. Who has made his light shine? Yeshua Jesus, in our hearts. The light of the knowledge of God, glory shining, how? Shining in the face of the Messiah, Yeshua. See, that's how we see God glory. Through the face of Yeshua. That's how they saw God glory. We see it through the Spirit. We also carry in our bodies the dying of Yeshua. Other words, as we're celebrating this day called Easter, which is Pesach, Passover, we are to be carrying this always in our body, not on a day that had nothing to do with the death, burial, and resurrection, but had to do with Peter being locked up in jail until after Easter. So notice what they said. We always carry in our bodies the dying of Yeshua. So are you going to wait until Easter to tell a person Yeshua died and God raised him three days later? No, we're to keep that in our hearts all the time. So that the life of Yeshua may be manifest in our body too. So the life of Yahshua, in that he died, he died once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. In that we die, we should die to sin, and we are to live unto God. For we who are alive are always being handed over to death for Yahshua sake, read Jesus sake. People want to kill you when you stand for truth. So that Yeshua's light red also might be manifest in our mortal bodies. Thus death is at work in us but life in you. 13. The Tanika written says I trust therefore I spoke. So if we're if we trust God's word, let's speak God's word. Many people won't speak it because they do not really believe it. But if we trust, that's what the disciples are saying here. I trust. Therefore, I spoke. So I trust God's word and I speak God's word. Since we have that same spirit who enable us to trust, we also trust and therefore, speak. If we trust the truth, let's speak the truth. Because we know. What do they know? Because we know that he who raised, dark blue, God, the Lord Yeshua, red, the Lord Jesus, will also raise up us with Yeshua. And bring us along with you and to his presence. So the same God that raised up Yeshua Jesus, his son, is the same God that going to raise up us through his son. The son Yeshua Jesus God teaches one why his father loves read him. Receive it or reject it our choice. This is why Yeshua Jesus teaching. This is why the Father loves me, not this is why I love myself. The devil is a lie. This is why the Father loves me, his son. Because I lay down my life. God loved Yeshua because Yeshua gave his life freely. So Yeshua says, this is why his Father loved him. And we know scripture. This is why the Father loved me, because I laid down my life in order 
to take it up again. John 10. Again, happy celebrated Resurrection Day called Easter. However, Easter is found once in the King James Version. Complete Jewish Bible, peace out, P-E-S-A-C-H, and A-M-P, Passover. Easter, Pesach, and Passover have nothing to do with Yeshua Jesus' death, nor him being raised from the dead. It has to do with Peter being kept in jail until after Easter, Pesach, Passover. And that information is in Acts 12, 1 through 4. 1 Timothy 3.16, Complete Jewish Bible. Great beyond all question is the formal hidden truth. Undefined, underlining our faith. He was manifest physically, proved righteously, spiritually, Yeshua Jesus, seen by angel and proclaimed among the nation, trust throughout the world, and raised up in glory to heaven. I don't know who was on there not long ago, and I mentioned a pastor quoted this scripture in 1 Timothy 3, 16. And I said, what? Evidently, he didn't read the whole chapter. Because when you study the chapter, it has to do with deacons and deacon wives and so forth. So when he saw formal hidden truth underlining our faith, he was manifest physically and proven righteous spiritually. He said it was God the Father. And I go, oh my God. I mean, you're talking about a preacher out there preaching almost every time I look on YouTube. And here, even this verse would make sense. He was manifest uh, physically. That was Yeshua. And proved righteous spiritually. God was always righteous. So Yeshua had to be proved. We see that in Isaiah where it pleased God to what? Bruise him. Because Yeshua had to be tried before he could become author of salvation. And I think I have the verse uh, somewhere down here in case I get there. If not, I guess I'll pick up and finish this tomorrow night. What time is it? We should be reminded and thankful throughout the year just how much God the Father loved all humanity that he sent and raised his first begotten son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead. And again, no one took Yeshua Jesus' life. He gave it. Freely, he had the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. That's in John 10, 18. No one take it away from me, read, yes, sure, Jesus. On the contrary, read, I lay it down of my own free will. I have the power to lay it down, so do we. And I have the power to take it up again, so do we. This is what my read, Yeshua, Father commanded me to do. Notice that. This is what my Father commanded me to do. Do you know God commands us to, to die to sin and live for him? Yes, we do. First Timothy 3 address uh, bishop, congregation leaders, deacons, women, wives, and children. A pastor quoted verse 16 and thought it was teaching that God the Father was Yeshua Jesus, saying godliness was God. Lord have mercy. It seemed like he did not study the chapter because if you study the chapter, you could see that could not be. I will not proclaim false doctrine, teaching, but the truth. Now the same verse I'm going to read from AMP. And great... We confess is the mystery, the hidden truth of godliness. He, Jesus Christ, see, right there in scripture, that's why people need, if they don't understand, look at other translations, but I knew it was Yeshua Jesus in the first place. Well, A&P let you know that's who it was. He, Yeshua Jesus, 
who was revealed in human flesh because he came in the flesh as we are in the flesh was justified god was always just he didn't have to be justified but yeshua was justified was justified and vindicated in the spirit seen by angels many people saw yeshua in the earth preached among the nation believed on in the world take it out who took him up god did take took him up in glory. That's why the Bible says God took him. Now I'm reading King James and one did not continue to study the chapter they could misunderstand and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now, here it says God was manifest in the flesh. What is this saying? That's the difference in these translations. God was manifest through his son because Jesus was in the flesh. God's spirit was in Yeshua. We manifest God. We manifest Yeshua. Although we are in the flesh, but the spirit is in us. So the spirit of God was in Yeshua. And so that's why if we read certain translation, it can uh, make us believe something that is really not saying. So that's why I'm reading different translation. Now I'm reading King James. And this is the one he quoted. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. That's Yeshua. Yeshua was in the flesh and God's spirit was in him. His son, meaning God's son, justified in the spirit. Yeshua, Jesus was justified in the spirit. As we are justified in the spirit. God was always just. Yeshua, Jesus was seen of angels preached unto the Gentile, believed on in the world, and received up. That means God took him up back to heaven, to glory. Acts 3 and verse 20. That's how soon. Complete Jewish Bible. So that time of refreshing may come from the Lord's presence. And he may send, who's going to send? Blue, God the Father. And he may send the Messiah, Christ. Appointed in advance from the foundation of the world for you. That is Yeshua. You would never see God send himself. God sent his son. King James, that was complete Jewish Bible, same verse. And he shall send, God going to send, Jesus Christ, read, which before was preached unto you. Acts 17, complete Jewish Bible. Saul and Silas came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue. According to his usual, usual practice, Saul went in and on that on three Sabbaths, he gave them dress from the scripture, explaining. Now watch this. Now remember, Paul had knowledge. Before at one time he did not until he got knocked down to the ground. Explaining and proving. What was Paul explaining and proving? That the Messiah, Christ, had to suffer, Christ, and rise again from the dead, Christ, the Son of God. And that this Yeshua, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you, is the Messiah, Christ. Paul did not explain. Paul did not prove. That it was God the Father that died and was raised. No, he said that the Messiah, Christ, had to suffer and rise again from the dead. And that this Yeshua, this Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you, is the Messiah, which is Christ. Now, verse 16 again. Great beyond course is the form of him truth underlying our faith. He was manifest physically and proved to be righteous spiritually, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nation, trust throughout the world, and raised up in glory to heaven. AMP again. That make it so clear. And great, we confess, is the mystery, the hidden truth of godliness. He, Jesus Christ, who was uh, revealed in human flesh, was justified and dedicated in spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nation, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. 
Yeshua Jesus had a promise from God. Why did he do what he did? Because one man had to die for the sins of the world. So Yeshua Jesus had a promise from God the Father. If he did. Notice the word if. That means it was up to him to do it. That's why he said, no man took my life. I gave it freely. That's why if. In Isaiah 53, and people read this as uh, the future, but this happened in the past. In Isaiah 53, 10. Yet, it pleased Adonai, the Lord, to crush him, Yeshua, Jesus, with illness, to see if, notice that, it proved God the Father to bruise, crush Yeshua, his own son, to see if he would present himself as a gift offering. Now, many people, they go read uh, Isaiah 53 and they think it uh, was in the future because they don't realize Yeshua died before the foundation of the world. That's why it's so important to search the scripture. Once at the end of the world, the Messiah appeared before God to put away sin forever, teaching us this world has not ended, so it was the end of the other world, but it just was not manifest to many people. Verse 8. After facadable arrest and sentencing, he was taken away, and none of his generation protest, past tense, his being cut off from the land of the living. For the crimes of my blue, God, blue God, for the crime of my people who deserve the punishment themselves, other words, he put the punishment upon Yahshua to die for the sins of the world. He was given a grave, a grave, red, Yahshua Jesus, among the wicked. In his death, he was with a rich man, Joseph. Although he had done no violence, Yahshua Jesus, and had said nothing deceptive. In other words, Yahshua never deceived, he never lied to anyone. Yet, it pleased Adonai, God the Father, to crush him with illness, to see if he would present himself as a gift offering. If he does, he will see his offspring. We are the offspring from Yahshua. And he will prolong his days. In other words, God was going to prolong Yahshua's days. That's why he died once in that he lived, he continued to live for God. And at his hand, Yeshua's hand, Adonai desires, God the Father, will be accomplished. After this ordeal, he will see satisfaction. Notice after. Remember the Bible says, after we have been tried for a while in Peter. After this ordeal, he will see satisfaction by his knowing pain and sacrifice. That's Jesus. My, that's God, blue God. Righteous servant, that's Yeshua Jesus, my righteous servant make many righteous, not all, many. It is for their sin that he suffered, the Son of God. Therefore, I will assign, God blue, that's God the Father, him a share, that's Yeshua Jesus, with the great. He will divide the spoil with the mighty for having exposed himself to death. Yeshua, Jesus, and being counted among the sinners while actually bearing the sins of many and interceding for the offender. Do you know it is Yeshua, Jesus, and I'm going to stop here, that intercede for those of us who break God's law? That's where offenders is. It was Jesus. And so they're going back to Yeshua knew if he obeyed God, that God's plan was going to be accomplished. Even if Yeshua did not, I'm sure God would have found somebody else. That's why we've been studying of that first Adam and that second Adam. The first Adam was natural. The second Adam was spiritual which is the 
Lord from heaven. When we study 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we can see that. That's why Yeshua had to be proved. And by him being proved and he passed the test, God made him the head of salvation. God made him the head of the church. And I love Pilate, and you know, for where when uh, Jesus, they were taking Yeshua to different places to, to uh, be judged. And five times, Pilate said, I find no fault in the man. I find no fault at all. And, and Yeshua said, you can do, they couldn't do anything to him except it wasn't except it was given to them of his father because he had power to lay it down he had power to take it back up again he could have called out to god at any time and changed his mind but he did not he went he he did not only take a test he passed the test we are taking a test but sometimes we are failing the test. We're not passing the test. Life is a test. Your faith is a test. We are being tried to see if we're going to continue in our faith, continue in our trust, rooted, grounded, unmovable. That's why Paul said they were standing on it. And if they did not continue to stand on what he gave them, they was running a race in vain. Some of us are preaching in vain. Some of us are uh, uh, hooping and hollering in vain. Some of us saying we have the Rosh HaKos Holy Ghost in vain because we are not teaching what the Holy Ghost teach us. Because Yeshua says when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to testify of me. He's going to tell you who I am. And if anyone re uh, 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 reject that report, they are blaspheming the Ruesh Hakosh. That's why the Bible said, uh, you, you're just like your forefathers. They always resist the Ruesh Hakosh Holy Ghost, letting us know the Holy Ghost was there. They just resist. They didn't receive. That's why Yahshua breathed on them and he said, Receive ye the Rosh HaKos. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So people are saying they have the Holy Ghost speaking as they say in a heavenly language, which is not even scripture. It's an unknown tongue. Language. They was talking. And they understood each other. And when they read that, uh, read Acts chapter number 2 completely, it says what? Let the whole house of Israel know that God has made that same Yeshua Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. See, that's what it was all about, who Yeshua was. They had the Holy Ghost, and they knew God poured out his spirit upon them. And they were, and the scripture said, let them know. He said, let the whole house, that means everybody that's in the house, let them know that God made, Yeshua didn't do it, that God made that same Jesus, Yeshua, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah, both Lord and Christ. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Your proof, your evidence, is in the word of God. And I know I put a lot of information out there on the video, but those who follow me, you know what I say. Just in case someone not hungry, I hope they get hungry and go back and study, the, not just the verse, study the entire chapter so we can, what, be rich in our spirit. So we can proclaim what the Bible teaches us. God cannot lie. God would never lie. Yahshua does not lie, but he will repent. But God the Father doesn't lie, nor does he repent. We read those scriptures, I don't understand. God is a man that he shall not lie or repent, nor the son of man that he shall repent. So Yahshua is the son, but Yahshua did repent. If Yahshua did, didn't repent, we would not make it. 
we, we just could not make it. That's why he repented the Lord that he had even, what, made man. He repented him. Yeshua is the mediator between us and God. That means he's to stand, he stand between us and God. That's why when we are sinners, God does not even hear the prayers of sinners. It Yeshua Jesus that hear the prayers of sinners. And that's why he said he is the mediator between man and God. Yeshua go to God on our behalf. But I love what Yeshua said to those disciples. There will come a time that I will not even pray for you. Because my father loves you. Because you love me. Sometimes people do not realize why God really loves us. Yeah, God loves the world, but he really loves us. Because we love his son. Because Jesus is the offspring from God. We are the offspring of from Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for joining me. I pray you have a blessed day today. Although it has nothing to do with Yeshua's death, burial, and resurrection. But we can rejoice through every day. And people say, it's a good day. Yes, it is. Every day God give us, it's a good day. Every day God give us, we can remember the death, burial, and resurrection of his son. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth, whomsoever continue to believe in him should, S-H-O-U-L-D, not shall, should, only a bad translation, should not perish, but have everlasting life. God love who? The whole world. Everyone. But it's up to us to make it through the gates. Up to us to make it all the way into the gate. That's why Yeshua said, He that overcometh until the end. He that overcometh, make sure you overcome. Make sure you're standing in your faith. Make sure you're trying to live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to God. Hallelujah. No one can stop you, only you can stop yourself. Hallelujah. No man has the power to take Yeshua's life. No man has the power to take your life, but we can allow the devil to have it. Hallelujah. Once again, just in case we have someone out there that has not acknowledged Yeshua, confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that God raised Yeshua from the dead. Romans chapter 10, 9 through 10 says, If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, because everything is established by two witnesses, that God raised him, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For out from the heart man continue to believe unto righteousness. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be saved. Damn. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. That means acknowledge our sin, not to say I'm sorry. He's faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then Proverbs 28 say, He that confesses and forsake his sins, repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses not will not prosper. So if you have not confessed, repeat after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead. And out from my heart I am to continue to believe that unto righteousness. Father, search our hearts. And if you find no faith in our hearts, oh God, Lord, have mercy upon each and every one of us. Give us faith, oh God. Help us to trust in your Son and lean not to our own understanding. God, I pray that you bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, bless them in their going in and their coming out. 
Bless them in the field and in the city. Help them to pull down every stronghold, everything that exalts itself above your word, God. Let it be condemned. In the name of Yeshua, God, if anyone is sick among us, God, we pray that you would heal in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah. Because he went about healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed by the adversary because you was with him. God, I thank you for being with us, oh God. I thank you for Yeshua being in us, oh God. I thank you for your spirit being in us, oh God. Order our steps, oh God, by your word. God, I bless you and I give you praise and I bless your people. In the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you all for joining me, everyone. Have a wonderful, blessed day. If you're free, join us tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, no, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time. And what's so amazing, the teaching that I have been teaching for the last few weeks just ran right into this message called Easter. So God is awesome. God is good. Order my steps in your word. Order my mind in your word. Order my eyes in your word. Order my hands in your word. Hallelujah. Order us, oh God. Let us be led by your spirit because those who are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah.